Welcome back to another Power BI 3 minute tip. If you like these quick Power BI tutorials, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can dynamically switch between a linear and log scale in your visualizations. Log scales are really handy in case you have some skewed data. Looking at this visualization right here, we see I have my sales amount by product subcategory. Most of my sales come from these three product subcategories where you see this um, big tail off in sales amount once you get to these other product categories. So a good way to actually see a data representation of these um, different product subcategories would be by looking at a log scale. So if we switch to log scale, we see that all of these product subcategories are now represented by a visible bar. And if you look on the left of this visualization, you see that the scale is now going in a uh, magnitude of 10. But if we look at linear, you see it's just a linear, every step is $2 million. So this is really good in some cases where you have the skewed data and you need to be able to uh, be able to get some representation. So the way we can actually set this up to be able to dynamically switch between the axis uh, scale type that we want is actually pretty interesting and I will walk you through that right now. So I'm going to open up a new Power BI, um, Power BI file here. I already have some tables loaded in. Let's go ahead and bring in a clustered column chart and I will throw in a product subcategory in my axis and my sales amount in my value. And this is what it looks like just like we saw on the linear. Uh, we can manually set the Y axis by going to the formatting pane, Y axis and scale type and we can go to log. So the interesting thing about this is you can only have a log scale when all of your data points are positive or all of your data points are negative. So the moment we add a negative value to this representation of positive data, it's going to automatically switch this back to a linear, um, linear scale because it can't represent a negative value with the log of positive values. Similarly, if you introduce a zero to this, when you're using the log scale, it's going to give you the same result. So that's actually what we're going to do right now. Let's go ahead and create a new table for our slicer selections. I'm going to go ahead and call this table scale. And this type or this column is going to be called scale type. And we're going to have linear and log. That's going to be our entire table. And once that loads, we're going to throw that into a slicer. Give that just a second to load. All right, and let's go ahead and grab a slicer. And we'll take in scale type. We are going to make this a horizontal orientation because I think that looks the best. And we'll place it right there. So this doesn't do anything right now. It just selects linear or log, but that has no bearing on this graph right here. Uh, what we're gonna actually do where the magic really comes into play here is we're going to create a measure. I'm just going to build it on the sales table. We're creating this measure to basically provide a value given this selected, um, this selection on this table right here. So if we call this scale selection, we're just going to have an if statement. We're going to say if selected value of the scale type uh, equals linear. We want to give that a value of a zero. If not, we want to give that a value of a blank. And I will show you what I mean. When I put this measure in a card, I will take in that scale selection. So when we have log selected or nothing selected, we are going to get a blank value here. When we have linear selected, we are going to get a zero. So the key to this is once we throw this measure into our visualization, we're actually going to be passing in a value of zero. And since a value of zero can't be represented, uh, represented on a log scale, it's going to make the graph switch back to um, a linear form, uh, format here. So if I go ahead and grab scale selection and throw it under sales amount for my clustered bar chart, you'll see we go back to a linear um, representation of our scale. And if I click on log, we go back to log because our measure is now blank. So taking a look at what this does behind the scenes, when we click on linear and we click on our graph here, let's go to the formatting and go to Y axis. And we can see that it's automatically switched back to linear and we have this error here. It doesn't even allow us to switch log, uh, to select log now. And that's because we have that zero in the mix here. 
So when we don't have a zero and we have a blank instead down here, we can get a log representation. I think I clicked out of, yeah, go ahead and click log and with linear, goes back to linear and log goes back to log. So that's the whole idea. There are a couple different charts that this will work for. Clustered bar chart is one. We can also do this with a line chart. One thing I want you to note here is when you click on linear, you'll see this bar down at the bottom because we're actually passing in a value of zero. The way you kind of make this look good is you can just come to this chart and go to formatting and go to data colors. And for the scale selection, I, you can make that a light gray. You'll never notice that that's there. You'll see it in the tooltip, but you can make your own custom tooltips now, so you can easily get around that. But similarly, it works the same way where we, we can get the log scale here or we get the linear scale. You can also do this with combo charts. Um, works the exact same way. So this is kind of a cool trick. Maybe you'll come across the need to do something like this where you want to give your user the ability to choose the scale type that they're looking at on these charts. So if you like this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button and I will see you in the next Power BI 3 Minute Tip.